welcome to the latest ASEAN news. Still with me, Vanessa. Myanmar health workers feel tension, physical, mental exhaustion, including one person die because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Myanmar nurse Win Win Min says the strain of working during the coronavirus pandemic has left many workers in the Southeast Asian countries fragile health care system physically and mentally exhausted. The doctors and nurses are getting infected and dying. But we don't have any backup or substitute for vacant work when the medical workers get infected. So we are so tired physically and depressed on the front lines against the virus. When speak to her mother via video call from the COVID-19 quarantine center, she fears of infection because she has worked for the past five months. She plans to retire next year, no matter what happens with the pandemic. And she feels that some traumatized health workers are close to breaking point due to the pressures. I have not been visiting my mother since the second wave resurged. She feels sad about me not visiting her home, as she is not aware of what happens. So, I have to make video calls to her often and talk in our family chat. A local township administrator tells Reuters he is concerned about managing the ongoing situation as medical workers became infected as well. Myanmar relies heavily on volunteers at quarantine center with on average two government health workers assigned to guide about hundreds of volunteers at each community center. Kin Kin Gi, director general of the Ministry of Health and Sports, agrees the pressures are high, but this meant medical workers are becoming close to each other, so they felt like family members or like comrades. The Department of Medical Research are working on an action plan to help address mental health issues facing by staff. He adds about 1,000 healthcare workers had been infected during the pandemic with one death. In recent months, Myanmar has seen a spike in cases with 100,431 infections and 2,132 deaths. Decades of neglect by Myanmar's formerly ruling military junta led the health system to be ranked the worst in the world by the World Health Organization in 2000, the last time it published ratings. The Catholic leader installed more than 10 new cardinals from several countries. Pope Francis installs 13 new cardinals, including the first African-American to hold the high rank, further expanding the pontiff's impact on the group that will one day elect his successor. The cardinals are installed in a ceremony known as a consistory that was markedly slimmed down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Only 10 guests per cardinal are allowed in St. Peter's Basilica as the Pope gives the men their ring and traditional red head known as Berrera. Nine of the 13 cardinals are under 80 and eligible under church law to enter a secret conclave to choose the next pope from among themselves after Francis dies or resigns. It was Francis' seventh consistory since his election in 2013. He has now appointed 57% of the 128 cardinal electors, most of whom share vision of more inclusive and outward-looking church. Thus far, he has appointed 18 cardinals from mostly far-flung countries that never had done, nearly all of them from the developing world. In consistory, Brunei and Rwanda got their first cardinals. While Europe still has the largest share of cardinal electors, with 41%, it is down from 52% in 2013, when Francis became the first Latin American Pope. The nine new electors come from Italy, Malta, Rwanda, the United States, the Philippines, Chile, Brunei and Mexico. Indonesia receives first vaccine from China to combat coronavirus disease. Indonesian President Joko Widodo says Indonesia received first shipment of coronavirus vaccine from China, arriving at airport by Garuda Indonesia as the government prepares a mass inoculation program. The chief state adds in an online briefing that the Southeast Asian country receives 1.2 million doses from China's Sinovac Biotech Limited, a vaccine Indonesia has been testing since August. Saya ingin menyampaikan satu kabar baik, satu kabar baik. I'd like to convey good news. Today we have received 1.2 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine. This vaccine made by Sinovac that we have been testing since last August. Di Bandung sejak Agustus 2020 yang lalu. 
The government plans to receive another 1.8 million doses in early January. He also expects this month to receive shipments of raw materials to produce 15 million doses and materials for 30 million doses next month. Kita juga masih mengupayakan 1,8 juta. We also still working to get 1.8 million doses of vaccine to arrive in early January of 2021. Apart from getting the complete version of vaccines, we are also getting 15 million doses of raw vaccine within this month and later 30 million doses in January that will be processed by Biopharma. Yang akan diproses lebih lanjut oleh Biopharma. Jokowi says the vaccine still needs to be evaluated by the country's Food and Drug Agency while his administration continues to prepare for distributing the vaccines across the vast archipelago of 270 million people. Kita tahu telah disiapkan sejak beberapa bulan yang lalu. We have been preparing for months through simulations in several provinces and I am sure that once it is decided that we can begin the vaccination, everything will be ready. Dimulai semua sudah dalam keadaan siap. Late stage trials of the Sinovac vaccine are also underway in Brazil and Turkey with interim results on efficiency from Brazil expected by mid December. Indonesia's daily number of coronavirus infections have accelerated with total confirmed cases reaching 575,796 with 17,714 deaths, the highest in the Southeast Asia. Malaysia and China work together to increase trade during the pandemic. In an interview with China Global Television Network, Malaysian Ambassador to China, Raja Nushirwan Zainal Abidin in Beijing says the trade between China and Malaysia increases despite the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, and the two countries will embrace more cooperation opportunities in the coming year. We originally started to sell durian paste and durian pulp since uh, 2011, and, and uh, last year, compared to the previous year, the sales uh, increased by about 300%. Uh, we were we were given permission to uh, import whole fruit Musang King durians from June of last year. Nushirwan says he is happy for this year because increased trade between China and Malaysia. Despite the pandemic, um, our trade has increased uh, by about 3.5% um, from January to October uh, this year. And this is on the back of uh, very big trade figures between Malaysia and China. Using Chinese statistics, our bilateral trade last year was $124 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, so Malaysia was uh, China's ninth uh, largest trading, uh, trading yeah. partner. The Malaysian ambassador says China's development goals for the 14th five-year plan period 2021-2025 will bring opportunities for bilateral cooperation. The ambassador also notes the bilateral cooperation on science and technology. Of course, the dual circulation um, and uh, domestic consumption is going to uh, be the engine of uh, growth for the Chinese economy moving forward. Mm -hmm. So as a major trading partner of uh, China, this is uh, very welcome news for Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, so we look forward to increasing our, our presence. The second is um, related to the strengthening of the market system. Um, and uh, with it comes uh, um, be a better investment uh, climate uh, because Malaysia is also an uh, investor in China. We are investors in, in both. Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, beneficial mutual relationship. The third is on uh, science and technology. Um, and uh, we are already uh, very, very strong partners in that respect. Um, as you know, uh, very many of the of Chinese largest and most important technology companies mm -hmm. Huawei, ZTE, to name a few, have been present in Malaysia for a very long time, more than 20 years. Yeah. Nushirwan says the country's emphasis on environment and ecological protection will also usher in opportunities for bilateral cooperation. Nushirwan arrived in China last August for his ambassadorship. He said that since then, he has learned to use WeChat to keep in touch with friends. He said he and his family have well adapted to the life in Beijing. Vietnam reports freeze locally transmit COVID-19 cases in 89 days. Vietnam's medical workers are busy conducting swab tests ever since the country confirmed its first locally transmitted case of the coronavirus in nearly three months. After the infection of a man related to a flight attendant who had tested positive after returning from Japan two weeks ago, 
the country's health minister urged provinces and state agencies to tighten screening and controls, while contact tracing efforts are launched after the 32-year-old man confirms as the first report domestic infection in 89 days. With its strict quarantine and tracking measures, Vietnam has managed to quickly contain its coronavirus outbreaks, allowing it to resume its economic activities earlier than much of Asia. Vietnam crushed its first wave of coronavirus infections in April and went nearly 100 days without local transmission until the virus re-emerged and was quickly contained in the central city of Da Nang in July. Vietnam so far have record 1,347 coronavirus cases, 600 of 55 of which it said were imported. Five Thailand deaths in monsoon flights flowed in southern region. Thailand reports at least five deaths after a flash flood bringing by seasonal monsoon swept through caused by monsoon rains hit seven provinces in the country's southern region. Authorities report the deaths all take place in Nakhon Si Tamarat province where television footage shows staff members of a hospital piling up sandbags outside an emergency room to fence of water gushing in front of the street. The flood started a week ago, according to the Interior Ministry, have affected more than 255,000 households, while over 500,000 in seven of the southern provinces. The impacted region is home of Thailand's major rubber plantations, accounting for the majority of the world's natural rubber supply. South Korea deals to buy millions vaccine of coronavirus doses, but no need to hurry. South Korea says they have signed deals to provide coronavirus vaccines for 44 million people next year, but it will not hurry to do the inoculation to allow more time to observe potential side effects. The government has secured vaccines for 44 million people, which is more than what we initially planned. Vaccines for 14 million more people. Specifically, vaccines for 10 million people were purchased via a COVAX facility. We don't see the need to hurriedly begin vaccination without ensuring the vaccine's risks have been verified. Other countries are moving ahead to grant emergency use approval for the vaccines in a bid to contain virus transmission. Britain will start rolling out Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine, and the United States and India have also begun regulatory reviews on some vaccine candidates. Health Minister Park Nyung Ho tells a briefing the South Korean government arranges to buy 20 million doses each from AstraZeneca PLC, Pfizer Incorporation, Moderna Incorporation, and another 4 million doses from Johnson & Johnson's Janssen, enough to cover up to 34 million people. Additional doses for 10 million people will be procured through the World Health Organization's global vaccine project known as COVAX. The government allocates an additional 1.3 trillion won or 1.2 billion US dollar to next year's budget for the purchase of the vaccines. The first vaccines would likely go to medical workers, elderly and medically vulnerable people and social workers. The government will seek to set up new storage to ensure the vaccines are kept at the right temperatures with the Pfizer product required to be refrigerated at minus 70 Celsius degrees, minus 94 Fahrenheit degrees. China and Singapore celebrate 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. China and Singapore review their bilateral cooperation progress and agree to deepen bilateral cooperation in infrastructure, finance, law, trade and technological innovation to yield more practical results. During the meeting, Chinese Vice Premier of the State Council, Hang Zeng, says this year marks the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Singapore, which aim to maintain a strong momentum of development. Both leaders also increase close communication and provide strategic guidance for the development of bilateral relations. China stands ready to work together with Singapore to safeguard multilateralism and free trade, create a new situation of mutually beneficial and win-win cooperation. Singapore Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiat said Singapore is willing to deepen the synergy of development strategies with China, improve cooperation mechanisms, strengthen vaccine cooperation, enhance the capacity to respond to public health emergencies and orderly resume regular personal exchanges. The two sides agreed to initiate follow-up negotiations on the upgraded version of the China-Singapore Bilateral Free Trade Agreement 
and promote the implementation of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement as soon as possible, so as to contribute to the two countries and regional economic recovery and development. After the meetings, Han and Heng jointly attend the celebrations for the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Singapore. Sitano Saksaket held religious ceremony in Cambodia to testify in her brother's case. The sister of missing Thailand activist Wan Chalaram Satsakit held a Buddhist prayer ceremony hopes of receiving favorable information about her brother's whereabouts. I come here today as we who shared the same religion believe. We're both from Buddhist countries. So we wish to know the whereabouts of Wan Chalaram through the good wishes from the monks. We are also coming here to find justice which will be delivered by the judiciary of Cambodia. We have some evidence to prove and confirm that Wan Chalaram was here in Cambodia. New York-based Human Rights Watch says Wan Chalaram was bundled into a vehicle in front of his Phnom Penh apartment in June. Cambodian police have previously said they were unaware a kidnapping had taken place. Sitanun and her companions conduct a religious blessing ceremony in front of the condominium site where he disappeared to pray for accurate information over her brother's fate. Sitanun also says the family still hope to be reunited with the missing activist but said the response of the authorities in both countries has not been sufficient. In a statement, the embassy says they are closely cooperating with the Cambodian authorities and will continue to provide assistance to Wan Chale Arm's family. At least eight are Thai activists who fled the country after the 2014 military coup have disappeared from Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam, with some later found dead. And that's all for today. Bye!